Hi, welcome back to a new episode of ET Retail Cafe by ET Retail, where we have been covering the retailers, their life, and about their brands a lot. So today, who we have with us? He's a well-known name in the industry from the past. 26 27 years he's been with the same industry which is consumer durables and he is none other than satish ns who is the president of hire india welcome to et retail yeah, cafe pleasure. satish uh, so tell me about yourself tell me how did the career started for you what was the inspiration behind it you have been with the same career from a really long time okay first of all it's a pleasure hosting you in our facility here So welcome to Hire. Thank you. So 26 years, uh, probably very few in this industry who have sold a black and white television to a today a QLED television. So that's a transition which I've seen in this industry, and uh, from a small retail shop to today probably online and modern rate retail. So the entire transition journey, I've gone through the journey. from a sellers market when i entered this industry uh, that's where actually things became really interesting when i finished my mba uh, when i walked into the industry that's where the transition was happening from a sellers market to a buyers market so that's when the whole retail thing was getting changed uh, earlier people used to wait for television to buy tele- their television then from there the retail thing completely started evolving so that's where probably it took down to me and uh, probably my mentors who were there at that time really encouraged and guided me saying that this is the future of this industry and this is retail so that's how 26 years has been good uh, a roller coaster ride which i have really enjoyed so you have worked with various brand lots of brand in the same segment so you must have picked up some learning from here and there and how are you applying all these learnings to the present brand which is higher where you are working right now first fundamental is the basics has never changed in the last 26 years the basics haven't changed basic when i meant looking at the consumer how he is buying what what are the things which he is considering before he buys so if the basics were right i think uh, anywhere we work uh, we would be successful in our industry when i have gone through the basics was like get your display right in the showrooms ensure your product information is given to them uh, rightly through your promoters or in shop promoters and then ensure the availability of the product is right in the showrooms and having said that the same if you see today earlier the probably 20 years back the people used to come to the showroom to get for the information today in the same thing is available online today the same thing we tell our team down the line in terms of the digital space ensure the information provided in our website to all our uh, digital assets are as informative as possible the transition which probably we have seen is from a aided purchase to an unaided purchase means in the aided purchase there was somebody in the showroom to explain today it is a unaided purchase which is probably customer himself is prompting himself to get the detail so these are the transition which we have seen as long as the basics were right i think you are right everywhere so one thing uh, I, what i understand from past 26 years years you have been in the same industry you must have seen the consumer behavior changing there was a time when there used to be one tv for the entire family and now every room has a tv these days i feel the consumer behavior must have changed drastically this is the reason their behavior their adoption to the tech is also changing that way yes see we have seen there's a very interesting uh, story which we used to say earlier in my 26 years i've seen doing a campaign this tv is for second bedroom or first bedroom okay now the third transition which we are seeing most of the consumer household now with the adaptation of the mobile phone the living room tv itself is also off from a multiple television probably it's going back to that old tradition of being a single tv that to very rare occasions that you know when a family sits together and sees a television otherwise each of them are occupied in their either uh, the uh, pads or the mobiles so we have seen this consumer behavior changing 
but the need of each of these devices has completely changed from what it was to an earlier. We used to say when I have sold a television which used to have only eight channels. So when the adaptation happened, we said, okay, the uh, number of channels went up to 200, 250, unlimited. Now again, it's come back to the old stage of today, OTTs are coming. So the mainline channels are being viewed less and the OTT platforms have taken over. So you can see a, a dramatic change in the viewing pattern or the way the, uh, the consumers are changing the uh, consumption of the uh, content. It was about consumer behavior. I want to talk to you about the life changing experience or the thing which happened to your life uh, or a decision which you took, which actually changed the co path of your career that way. So first is when I uh, moved from a, in my younger days, moved from a smaller town to a bigger town, Bangalore. My first ask to my dad was, I want to ride a double decker bus. So <laughs> I still remember the days uh, we landed from a place called Chikmangalore. So we landed in that uh, Bangalore city around 7.30. We left four buses, which was a single decker buses to ensure that I travel in a double decker. That's the childhood experience. Fascination. And uh, for me, probably today, whatever I am, my inspiration has been my mother. She's been always pushing us saying that education is everything. Even though financially we were well off, but uh, she always felt that education is something which will take you in the longer run. One of the continuation of that journey, probably it's been my wife, who when I was 45 years, she said, uh, you take a break in your career. I was contemplating on taking a break in a career. So she said very clearly, listen, Satish, if you had money, you would invest on a property or a, a flat or a, a you know land but probably i would encourage you to take a, invest in your career which will take you in the long run so that's one of the probably the life changing experience which i would say uh, at 45 years leaving a job and then going on your own to us and doing a mba again going back to school college again studying you know like you know and competing with the uh, fresh MBAs in the same class. It was like a life changing experience and today probably that has really helped me to put the theory behind most of my decisions. So as you are fondly called as NSS, which one is your favorite product of hire? I mean you have your favorite name by which is called by friends. What is your favorite product over here at hire and why? Our front loading washing machine uh, is the most fascinating uh, product which I really enjoy selling uh, because the kind of features which are there, it is actually, uh, you know, features which are meant to be used. So I'll give you a simple example, the costliest shirts or any of your dresses when you wear it for a single time, you don't need a complete wash. There's a feature in our product which is like a refresh wash without using a detergent, without using a water, it washes in the steam. Within 15 minutes, your cloths are fresh and clean. You know, starting from that, uh, you will see the uh, demonstration when we are showing. It's, a, it's, it's probably one of the best product which I would recommend a consumer to buy as a, as a uh, president of this company. That's nice. You have your favorite product that way. There must be some values also which are very close to your heart and you must be flowing those values down in the company. Uh, which are those values and how it is helping to build a company in a very strong way going ahead? See, as the question is right, when you are a small company, it's very easy to build a business. As we keep growing, in my personal uh, view, three P's are important. First is the people. Because as long as it's a smaller company, you can be there everywhere and take the right decisions. As the business grows, you need people who understand the, the, the path or the road which you want to set or the vision which you have set and then work towards it. So that's the people. Second is the product. For any company to be successful, the product has to be a hero. A product has to be a well-researched product and then 
uh, with lot of uh, R&D, you need to really build that product. So that's when probably you would be, as a brand, we would be successful. Third part is the processes. When you have a right people, when you have a right product, it's the process which has to control the entire system rather than the system controlling the process. So these three are the key ingredient for any large company to be successful. That's nice. So how nicely the people are adopting it and bringing the changes in the company? See, we encourage. See, one of the uh, true to our inspired living philosophy, we encourage people to do small experimentation. In fact, most of our uh, key uh, department heads, we have a target or, or probably an, an, an undisclosed target to do small, small experimentation. We encourage people to fail, you know, because we are a growing organization. Yeah. We, if we stick to the regular practices which we have, you will never grow. You will probably get the incremental growth uh, over the industry. If you have to grow exponentially, we have to make certain moves which are untraditional. And for that, the people have to be ready to face that, uh, you know, challenges and the mistakes and we should learn from the mistakes. That's what we encourage for. That's really nice, Satish. Uh, one thing I want to know, there was a time when television or maybe other consumer durables were I mean, India was adopting the change that way when you started your career. I mean, washing machines were not prevalent. Uh, maybe there was a, I, used, I still remember being a child, there was used to be a washing machine at my home, which just used to wash the clothes and didn't used to uh, spin it around. The, uh, I, I don't know if I'm doing the justice and trying, to explain, in trying ex to explain it to you or not. But now there are smart IoT built devices which Hire is also producing. So how do you see these technology is actually helping the brand and the consumer grow in a way? See, today uh, your, your point was very right. See, if I go back to 10 to 15 years, the life was not so agile, hustle bustle, you know. We had enough time and we had enough time to see what we are doing. Today. Uh, your traffic, your work pressure, it allows you very little time for the household uh, things. What the IoT does is, uh, most of these things can be programmed. The repetitive acts which are there could be programmed into any device. Okay? So, for example, imagine you put your uh, clothes inside, you want to wash them. So from the office, you can probably set your app and then set the program and the machine is on. And then you're reaching home in another one hour. So you would want your house to be, uh, you know, really cool and welcoming. So you could set your uh, temperature in the AC through the app. And then imagine uh, you have certain uh, vegetables in your refrigerator. If the, let's say tomato, you have to have one kg which you're programmed. Moment it becomes a half a kg, you're consumed without even you knowing. I mean, probably you have used it. And automatically the refrigerator switches on and it orders through the online shops which are available. So the IoT, uh, the way we look at it is, it should not be an innovation for the sake of innovation. It should really help the consumer to ease their life, you know to uh, make their daily uh, activity much more enjoyable. That's, that's the true spirit which we actually live in our inspired living philosophy as a brand. So what are the you know, other innovations that we can foresee in the future in the consumer durable segment? In terms of innovation, see, it's a connected house. So imagine uh, the, your house automatically in the morning, your screens open depending on the sunlight outside or your AC automatically you set a temperature like in your car today which you are enjoying the auto setting probably your house gets cooled in such a way and then your refrigerator starts telling you what you can cook today depending on the ingredients which are available inside the refrigerator. So that's the near future which we see very shortly. Technology is moving at a very rapid pace, Satish. What if it takes your job one day? What will you do? Okay, first thing is, I'll go back to teaching. 
on the lighter note. But see, what we see, uh, there's a whole thing which is uh, going around in uh, artificial intelligence. What does artificial intelligence do? It takes the certain repetitive nature of actions and the repetitive decisions which were taken. Okay, And then it says, if the situation is this, this is a decision which you need to take. Okay, But there are two things which probably we should visualize. The decisions which were taken or the things which happened, happened in a period which probably the consumer behavior was completely different and the competition was completely different. You need somebody matured enough to understand the uh, processes which is involved and ensure the decisions which are taken are right. That's where probably a people who understand this back end would never have a threat into their job. That's what I strongly believe. So Satish, tell me one more thing going ahead. How are you bringing in the, cha bringing the changes here at Hire, which are going to decide the future of the brand going ahead? True to our brand philosophy of customer in inspired innovation. So any product which we are bringing in, uh, we encourage our team, both the product team, the R&D team and the marketing team to visit the customer, understand the way they are using. One is question is, okay, you ask the customer, what would you like to have? Say, suppose we meet a customer who has been using our air conditioner for last three years. So three years versus now, there's a lot of innovation which has happened. The customer has a lot of needs, so he answers. Some of the questions he would probably answer, some of them he may not. But the, uh, the challenge for the team is to identify that unsaid need. For example, the innovation which we bought was a three-door side-by-side. When we found out the people who are using a side-by-side -side refrigerator, the freezer section, when we visited some of the customer house, it was not being used fully. When we asked, they said, we are being vegetarians, we don't need such a uh, freezer section. That's when, when they came back, the R&D team and the entire product team sat and said, there is a need for a side-by-side, -side, but a lesser of freezer space. That's how the innovation of our new side-by-side, -side, which is three-door. The th third door part you can convert into freezer or a refrigerator section the way you need. So that's how uh, we've been sticking to our core philosophy of customer-inspired living. That's the way forward for our team. So actually consumers deciding the way how the brand should go ahead. That is really nice. This is what will happen. See, any brand or any product to be successful, we must understand the customer. If the core understanding of the customer is clear, your product is just a resultant of those observations which you will do. Very nice, Satish. It was a pleasure talking to you. So before we wrap it up, I would li like to have a rapid fire with you. I don't want to give you a time to think about it, uh, you have to answer the questions as soon as I ask I'll them. I'll try my best. Yeah. So tell me, which is your favorite business book and what do you like about that book? See, the book is uh, way, way You Measure Your Life and There's a Founder's Dilemma. These are the two books which I would read. These are authored by Clay Christensen. It is something about, one is about life. How would you, you've been successful, but how would you measure your life? The second one is how the uh, companies can innovate and disrupt the current things which are happening around the industry or the product. Oh, nice. So next question is, which is your favorite pastime? Uh, People know that you, what you do over here, everybody is, re is on LinkedIn, everybody is, reads about you on, in, the, in the papers, maybe in the magazines, but nobody knows what is your favorite pastime, what do you like to do in your favorite time? So time? Learning about other industries. Uh, that really helps you to look at things in a completely different way. Like, you know, what's happening in the electronic uh, vehicle industry, different industries, what's happening in the solar, what is happening in the energy industry. It really opens up a lot many things and, and, and that keeps me occupied. As we, it's a retail show, so I would like to know which is your favorite retailer or the favorite brand? Brand, uh, definitely, I would say Apple and retail again there, the kind of experience which they provide in their stores and as a brand think differently, which they've been always moving 
uh, be it uh, a touch screen, be it a iPod, be it a uh, earpod. There's always been, there's something every September, you wait to see something in its new is going to come. Okay, it's not a cheap, it's expensive, but it always keeps you guessing what would something be happening in the product or in the brand. So that's probably is the best answer I would say. One achievement of yours which you are really proud of? Building a team which understands the basics of this industry. Uh, what as a brand we've been doing so far is we are not doing anything uh, miracle. We just follow the basics which are required. I think that's the uh, probably happiest thing which I would say when I put my last signature, I would say so many people we have developed and who would be behind me. Nice. So one more thing that now people have started shopping for their consumer durables are from the e-commerce websites also. Where do you shop your consumer durables from online or offline? See, if, if my purchase is a more of a repetitive, I, I would prefer to go online because it's more of a repetitive. I know what I'm wearing. But if it is non-repetitive, I would prefer to go offline. One is, of course, you feel, touch and feel the product and then you, you, you see that. Second is, uh, you also get an opportunity to study your, your consumer, uh, uh, why they behave and what do they do and what do they look for and, and before, uh, you know, what, what kind of a decision-making process is involved. It really is a uh, wonderful journey to study in the shop floor. So my last question to you is one thing that you want people to learn from you. Satish, you don't have time to think. This is rapid fire. Okay. Uh, work hard. Work hard and then uh, push your things to limit. Uh, there's no end. I, I strongly believe uh, brain, uh, it expands the way you use and the amount you use. So work hard and then enjoy life. That, that's probably I would want my team to learn from me. Definitely. It was a pleasure having you at our show, Satish NS. No, NSS. It was a pleasure you having so you much. at our Thank show. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you for watching the episode where we, are, we, we were covering Satish NS, who is the president of Higher India. We'll be back next week with another, another retailer, another story. Till then, keep waiting. Bye-bye.